This is Dawncraft, a huge Minecraft mod pack. And this, this is the fire giant. You goddamn beast, how about we take a step back? So, I was just scrolling on YouTube, when all of a sudden, I saw Dawncraft. I was intrigued, this. This was interesting. Still, I haven't played Minecraft in years, and that wasn't going to change it until I saw him. For those of you who don't know him, he's the fire giant from Elden Ring. And I've played Elden Ring a little bit, so we've developed quite the relationship between us. A bad relationship. That's why I'm going to spend the next 100 days here in Dawncraft just to kill him. No, 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 that's not enough. Destruction. You fool. You think you can kill me? Try it. <laughs> Day one started with a talk to Korok. He told me to find the nearest village and talk to the guildmaster. He will explain everything for me and lead me to the fire giant. Coincidentally, my spawn area was also the area of a boss, the Goblin King. I was a bit cocky and tried to hunt him, searched for the entrance and entered it. But it wasn't the Goblin King's base, it was some kind of jump run dungeon. I obviously had zero problems with the parkour. <coughs> And at the end, a puzzle awaited me, but I didn't get it. I wasn't even allowed to focus. We had a fungus ass attacked me out of nowhere. Eventually, I solved it. Definitely, me. D it didn't look the solution that trust me. And it already became nighttime, but it shouldn't be that dangerous, right? What the hell was that? I knocked out there and hit myself again. Inside, however, another fungus ass creature was there. I had to make a run for it. Immediately. Bad idea. Now, as you've noticed, I'm not playing hardcore. Trust me, I tried. But I haven't played Minecraft in years. So let's just go with survival mode. Hard difficulty. I'm gonna keep the devs at a minimum. Never mind. Right afterwards, I built a boat and noped out there as fast as I could. Found the pirate ship, but ignored it for now. I had a map with me that showed me the nearest village. That was our first destination. Then I found some humans. I thought, hey, maybe some friendly NPCs? Nope. Barbarians. Ran as fast as possible. Well, not ran, more like sailed. Afterwards, I saw a house. I thought maybe it's part of the village, but a champion monster waited there. Damn you, Dawncraft. And finally, I found the village. But, but why is it like a maze? Where am I? What is not playing hardcore? Impossible. We have to stop him. Kill the guildmaster. His only way of finding us. The next day began with me just trying to survive in the village. I also found a mansion right beside it. Seems like it belongs to pillagers. After exploring the maze village, I found the guildmaster. But there were too many enemies. So I hid in the house and fend them off. Then out of nowhere, a freaking griffin tries to end me. I used my most overpowered skill, cheese. Afterwards, I just slept. The next day, I noticed the guildmaster disappeared. I searched for a long time, but didn't find him. And during my search, I noticed a goblin king was there. And he was getting destroyed. So I rushed over there to steal all the loot he had. I got a crown. Perfect. And equipped full iron armor. After exploring the whole village, I knew the guildmaster died during the hordes of enemies on day 3. I had to find another village. Unlucky. Back to the ocean and just start traveling. This time, I didn't have a map for a new village. So I let the waves take me wherever. On my travels, I found... I think a seal? And I don't know why, but I tried to put him back into the water. The next day, I found another pirate ship, marked down for later. And somehow I died due to a leopard attack. Alright, alright. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I then decided to take another route to find the village. And boom, bam, bang, I found it. <gasps> the village? God damn, yeah, baby. After sleeping, I talked with the guildmaster. Hey, how are you? Fine day, huh? Beautiful day, beautiful day. I asked him about the fire giant's whereabouts, but he told me I was too weak. <laughs> well, he is right. Apparently, I had to prove myself with an elaborate quest line, so I reluctantly agreed and got the first quest. Kill 10 pillagers. And we already knew where they were hiding. But I decided to first off, gear up, also known as loot the village. Shit. <clears throat> but in Dawncraft you have to be careful. If the villagers see you stealing, your reputation lowers. And that's not good. We need the villagers. I saw on top of church, so I tried to loot there. Oh shit. Never church. All of a sudden, while going up, a fight broke out. The village versus goblins. Hey, if I see free loot, I'm gonna take it. And I then decided that this would be the perfect base of operation for me. I continued looting the whole village on day 9, talked a bit with the villagers, got a lot of side quests for later. I then organized my delicious bounty. In the morning, I decided that I needed more resources to get stronger. So, found a weird cave entrance and entered it. I saw the weirdest shit, but continued going deeper and deeper. I had to fight a few times for my life, but I survived. I made resources as I saw fit. I didn't know what would be useful. Not gonna lie, it kind of bit scary in the caves. I found diamonds. That was great, but I was really tense. I also found an underground dungeon. I knew that looting this was the way to get instantly stronger. But where does creatures attack me? I had to defeat him first before exploring a dungeon. That's when I died. God damn it. He's getting stronger. Close off the mines. Send rotten. Respawning at my base, I decided I couldn't let this underground dungeon pass. The guildmaster's quest could wait. I had to loot the dungeon. So I went back to the cave. But this time, a champion mob waited at the entrance. Seemed like a legendary beast. He obviously was way stronger than me. But that won't stop me. I have a special kind of skill set. Cheese. So I cheesed him. Took a long time. A long time. But then finally he died. 
I did it. I did it. I was eager for my legendary loot. Um, is this good? I went back to base to organize and coincidentally found out about the quest tab. What? Quest? The tab introduces Dawncroft and explains its mechanics. Find information about Dawncroft in this book. That would have been way more useful on day one. I then entered villager quest, unlock trading. So I crafted a bow for a villager quest. I just needed to find the villager. Hello? Is it you? He is flexing on me. Man. And he wants two feathers? Well, I didn't find him. So I went back on my way to the underground dungeon. That's when I met him. Corvin the Rotten. Holy shit. He easily killed me. Holy shit, man. But maybe this was all planned, because now I easily found the villager for the bow. Wait, did you want a bow? <gasps> Here you are. So I had to dive for a reason, man. Back in the cave, I tried cheesing Corvin. But he was Ooh. cheese proof. I can... I think I fight fit. You, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't... <laughs> I tried again, but I made a crucial mistake. I had to run away. Please? The next day I went back to the cave and found out that another cave was exactly behind this one. I fought that bit, saw a weird creature and then blocked the cave. Oh, yeah, let's close it for now. I then decided to face off against Corvin again without any kind of cheese. Corvin. But no success. He was way too powerful. Maybe maybe I wasn't fit to be a warrior. Maybe a farmer. And well, yeah, I started farm. A good night's sleep woke me up again from this negativity. I remembered what the guildmaster told me. In this realm, you can learn powerful skills and get stronger through that. And the reward for his first quest was one of those powerful skills. It was time to face the pillagers. I went ham on them. The legendary X killed five pillagers in one hit. Holy moly was that strong. But with one pillager remaining, I died. How? After my death, I continued my farm. But this time, with another outlook on things. A warrior also needs to eat, or something like that. I killed nine pillagers, so I still needed one. Went back to the mansion and attacked it. I didn't find one, but I looted a bit. And somehow, I heard a few loud storms. I didn't know what it was. I also wasn't sure if I was up to fight this monster. I got a bit scared, but I focused on just one pillager for now. And slowly, I found one. Finally, I completed the quest. You fools, he's progressing too fast. Slow him down, send the army, attack the village. I went on my way back when I found a skeleton demon wither kind of thing. I ran away on my first day, but now I wanted to test myself. But he called for backup, so I ran away. Back at the village, I talked to the guildmaster. He rewarded me with the most important skill, the roll. Sometimes, the best offense is defense. Wait, what? And I then took the next main quest, the Goblin King. Remember the legendary axe? Only while editing did I realize its power. In game, I felt like it was pretty weak. So I exchanged it for a samurai sword. I mean, come on. Samurai sword. I tried it out and loved it. Afterwards, I had to make a decision. Focus on the main quest or try again against Corvin to loot the dungeon. But I still felt too weak to fight Corvin. So, Goblin King it is. I was then ready to go out. But coincidentally, found out that the quest tab had more pages. I knew it was time to pause everything and study. Study like there's no tomorrow. Well, there was a tomorrow. And I decided to explore around the village and test out the stuff I learned from the quest tab. But when I arrived back at the village, it was an attack. I had to help defend it. Definitely for the villagers. I, I just took the loot because nobody else would have taken in the morning, I fought off the rest of the monsters and began to start trading. I then crafted the paraglider from the quest tab. And man, was I happy with that. It was time for the Goblin King. Again, we already knew the location. Spawn area. I traveled by boat and saw some kind of boat structure. It gave me the Jaws achievement. Don't know what that was. I then arrived at the pillager mansion and decided to explore it a bit more. There was still the trembling there, so there must be something. I fought off pillagers and didn't find anything about the tremblings. Afterwards, I traveled towards the Goblin Castle. It was getting dark, so I decided to sleep now so no other monsters would spawn. And it was finally time to kill the goblin king. On second thought, I didn't feel ready enough for the castle, so I went back to the village. De definitely my choice. I, I didn't die or anything like that. I knew I needed better gear and get stronger. The quest tab taught me that exploration was the way to go, so I went into a completely new direction, into the unknown. Already I found an entirely new monster. I then found Archwell and learned that this was necessary to learn magic. Magic sounds cool. Maybe that was the key to becoming stronger. Exploring around, I found a tower and ventured into its direction. On the way there, I found a horse statue. There was a cute horse. He and I instantly clicked. I named him Ferdinand and promised him to tame him in the coming days. At the top outskirts, monsters rushed me and I died. Back at the base, I started to get into magic, but I still needed a lot of resources. So I went back to the caves and yeah, I forgot about Corvin. I continued with magic crafting without the resources. I just hoped I had enough to get a bit stronger. I then decided to shield my base with fences so mobs wouldn't attack. During the night, the village got attacked again. Something felt off. It all somehow felt planned. I helped out again with my limited strength, but this night, this night was different. I 
I realized this quest to get stronger was now bigger than me. I needed power to protect. That's why I can't take it with me right now. I promise you, when I'm stronger, I'll be back. So I tried to raid the tower again, but I died. I needed to risk more to get stronger. High risk. High reward. I attacked the tower again, died many times, and decided maybe it was time to try the caves again. On the way there, I surprisingly found a monster spawner, and under it was a chest filled with everything I needed to continue learning magic. I knew what I had to do. After immersing myself into learning magic, I ventured into the caves. This time, I was gonna ignore Corvin. In the cave, I noticed a lot of changes, like a virus. Corvin infested the caves. I knew someday I had to kill him. Also, I would get the chest for killing him, but, but that's besides the point. Again, it got pretty scary down there, with more weird creatures. I couldn't find the dungeon anymore, and unfortunately died down there. After respawning, Morning, I organized my inventory and decided to continue with my reckless approach. For my high-risk approach, I needed more inventory space. That's why I aimed for a backpack. I needed a letter, and by chance, I found a tiger, but he killed me. <laughs> also, I found a creeper that was like a boombox. Wiped a bit, but I had to continue. I died a lot, and killed the tiger in the process. Oh, nice. But he dropped nothing. Wait, what? Found another big cat kind of thing, and finally had enough for the backpack. Also, at some point in my venture, I found a dude who talked to me. <laughs> I think it's right to say that we became friends. Ferdinand would have laughed. I also found a pirate ship and cheesed them. They all fell in like the idiots they were. <laughs> idiots, fucking idiots. <laughs> but I laughed too soon. Damn, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. At my base, I crafted a backpack and immediately upgraded it. Coincidentally, at my base, a trader appeared and he traded diamonds. I couldn't let that chance slip. I was finally building some momentum. The next day, I found a skyship and climbed towards it. Nearly killed myself. <gasps> I explored the interior, but the passengers didn't allow that. I never went back to the pillager mansion. There were still things to explore. I went into the mansion dungeon and unfortunately died pretty fast. But I knew I could conquer it. I tried again and finally showed them that I was getting stronger. Looted the whole dungeon and then found the boss room. I wasn't interested for knowing the boss, but I wanted to steal a few books. He did not like that. So I ran away for now. The next day I decided to clear some villager quests. Honestly, finding them was the hardest part about it. I then continued on my reckless exploration. In the distance I could see a camp. I looked closer and saw a few villagers in a prison. I had to help. A bit of fighting later, I rescued them. I also found a few notebooks. I noticed I wasn't the only one spending one of the days here. Who was this mysterious person? Also, they talked about the crow being a witch. And surprisingly, there was a caged crow. So I took it with me. Maybe it'll come handy in the future. I continued traveling and saw new regions and also new mobs. A freaking bear. And he killed me. I wanted to raid the tower again. I previously found a cabin on the way there. And I decided to make a pit stop. The poor dude was trapped in snow. So I rescued him. Also, I nearly froze in the snow trying to rescue him. But let's not talk about that. Where was I? Alright. I arrived at the tower and noticed it wasn't just one. It was two. One stone and one wooden. I decided to raid the wood one first. I walked my way slowly upwards and looted as much as possible. It was a great day. I even progressed to the highest floor of the wooden tower. From this position, I could also easily enter the stone tower. So I slept and immediately raided the stone tower. I saw a cube hovering around, but I couldn't interact with it. It was also a locked chest. I then had the idea to raid the tower from the highest floor down. A lot of fighting on it. I once nearly died, but then just cheesed the enemies. Somehow, after a while, the clouds began to attack me. Pretty weird, honestly. Even so, they were just a minor inconvenience, I thought. But a champion cloud attacked me and poisoned me. Still, I learned that I got stronger. And this time for real, I was going to kill the Goblin King. Good job of the clouds, my minions. But we can't stop here. We need to destroy his morale. Kill his most precious in the whole world. On the way there, I saw a few curious buildings and checked it out. A mistake. The ocean wasn't as safe as I thought. Goddamn scalawalks. Anyway, <laughs> had to travel all the way again. This time, I got there without any complications. It was time to face the Goblin King. I ran in and searched for a safe space. Camped in there and picked them off one by one. I slowly progressed through the castle and even found a mimic. After a short nap, I found the Goblin King. He tried to hide, but that made it easier for me. At some point, he teleported away. What a coward! That was the king here? I knew the fight would be easy, but, but where was I couldn't find him. I spent the whole day just searching for his ass and at the end of the day, I finally found him. He didn't put up much of a fight, but he was annoying. After killing him, I took his crown and traveled back. I then saw a griffin, which I don't know what it was. I also found a piglin base and I decided to conduct mayhem <laughs> at my base. I just slept for the day. The next day, I just dabbled in magic again, like the whole day, and realized I needed more resources to unlock new spells. I forgot to talk to the guildmaster for the next quest. He told me about my next opponent, the corrupted ogre. Looking at the map he gave me, I finally realized what the tremblings were. I also got a new companion, Thorsten, but he said he'll help me out in the future. On this day, I randomly explored and didn't find much. At night, I got back to the village. <gasps> Holy shit, did it scare me. Which was again under attack. This time, I had to protect. But somehow, the village was prepared and I just enjoyed the show. Beautiful, beautiful day. I feel like um, I'm interrupting something. Maybe? 
obviously I took all the loot. I continued randomly traveling from place to place. I was looking for magic resources. Coincidentally found a pillager spawner and after fighting and destroying it, found diamonds. Oh my god. I got back to base to safe keep them there. The next day I easily cleared the pillager outpost. <laughs> I then found a special boss, the Sentinel Knight. He just dashed at me and I died. But at his base, I found cows. Exactly what I needed for my magic crafting. I took a bucket and was ready for my mission. I just need the cows. Moo. Moo. I only needed milk, even if I died. Surprisingly, the Sentinel Knight wasn't there anymore. I got everything for the new spell and was hyped. I continued to explore around and found a sign. It was telling me about something. This must be a sign. 900 blocks, 800 blocks. But I completely forgot about it after I found the pillager base. I fought them off and am um, saying Barbie? Come on everybody, let's go party. <laughs> During the time of my recording, Barbenheimer was big, alright? Th that's the reason, don't question me. Anyway, I died after fighting a few. That didn't matter anymore. I was at my base and could craft my spell. Now, after I spent so much time on magic, I wanted to test it out. And that's what I thought it would be like. But the reality... All the time wasted. I had no time to waste anymore and got ready to raid the corrupted ogre. He awaited me and immediately threw his eye at me. Holy shit. He nearly killed me with his eye. His eye became a hindrance. But I had an ace up in my sleeve. And at the right moment, I used it. Magic may be useless, but for a cheeser, it's another possibility. And the corrupted ogre fell to my tactics. Back at the village, I got the next main quest, Night Rober. The guildmaster wanted to tell me important stuff, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get back to the mansion and clear it. And that's what I did. I was unstoppable. I finished the Mentioned. But remember the underground dungeon boss? I rushed in and he killed me. That didn't stop me. Death was now an ability for me. I respawned and rushed him again. He couldn't even recover and was killed. On my way back, I rescued the cage cows and took them with me. They'll be my first farm animals. But the vampire interrupted and killed me. I immediately got back there to continue transporting the cows. But when I arrived back, only meat and leather remained. Wait, this meant friendly mobs were not safe outside. Ferdinand, I rushed back, wondering if he was even alive. Took the wrong route and had to fight off many different ones. Monsters. Back on track, Thorsten was there. This time, he was ready to help, and together we fought through the night. However, death took me all the way back. While the night turned into the day, I ran as fast as possible. Finally, I arrived at the horse statue. Now, all that was left was finding Ferdinand. Oh, he is just chilling. I told him it was time. Time I tamed him. Alone, he would die out here. But he didn't need to know that. He was thrilled and wanted to explore the world. So I decided to travel around with him. Together, we cleared the pillager base. And I stopped at another pirate ship. Ferdinand and I continued to travel around. We were having a blast. We committed ourselves to travel the whole world together and become the strongest duo in all of the rep. What the fuck did you have? I didn't know how to continue anymore, but I remembered one thing. Ferdinand had a brother near the statue. He he didn't know about Ferdinand's death. I had to tell him. I traveled there and found him. I, I told him everything, but he was a horse. He couldn't respawn. What I and Ferdinand had was something magical. Still, I needed a new horse, so I tamed Ferdinand's brother. But I couldn't build this relationship too much. Afterwards, near the tower, I found a new village. It seemed huge. At the village, I found a world spring and got a world spring shard, which I could use for magic automation stuff. I also found some chicken and built a prison. <laughs> <laughs> a farm for them. May need them as resources later on. At night the whole town was attacked, but we fed them off. In the morning, I torched the tower village, so that monsters wouldn't spawn at night. And then focused on magic crafting again. Maybe there was still a way to get powerful. Hopefully. I built a few enchanting apparatus, and crafted star bunker and drink me charms, for magic automation kind of thing. Honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. The next day was again just magic crafting. I built a huge farm, and also crafted a dominion wand. With it, I could control the small magical creatures. I then remembered the stone tower again, and how close this village was to the tower. I could theoretically rush in there, die, and repeat to get stronger and stronger. And that's exactly what I did. The tower was helping me to forget and making me stronger in the process. Toss was also there to help out and console me. I progressed easily through the tower, but was then betrayed by the only human companion I had. Thorsten? Thorsten, seriously? After all we've done. A mistake, he told me. Back at the village, I cleared a few villager quests and afterwards continued my approach on the tower. My companion really annoyed me. He was just an obstacle to my goals. Was it again Torsten? But he then showed his competence. Damn, Torsten, you are useful. Maybe he wasn't all that bad. Maybe he was like Ferdinand. Maybe he and I could conquer this tower together. Oh no, again. No! God damn it, you killed Torsten. 
on this day, I felt numb. I tried to distract myself with weapons. I found a beauty, the Shikage. I wanted to build this bad boy, but didn't have enough resources. Maybe the tower could help out there. The tower was becoming my life. I don't know how many I killed and how many times I died. I had the brilliant idea to set my spawn inside the tower, so there was no way to leave it. And I would remain here, either broken or conquering the tower. So I did that and closed off all exits. The tower was now my home and I tried to live with it. I cleared floor after floor and with each clearing, my mind also got clearer and clearer. I destroyed the mobs and looted my ass off. I collected some kind of keys and after a long time I got back to the top. This time with the keys. I could now unlock this cube kind of thing and the biggest battle of my life in short. Guardian has fallen. I finally conquered it. Now, for all the struggle, my reward awaited me. Wait, what? Why is it so locked? With all its energy, the tower will collapse. Alright, yeah. The tower didn't give me much time, and now we start to explode. When I got back, the tower was already in shambles and there was nothing waiting for me. Apparently it was a bug or maybe the world or someone was plotting from day one against me. How did you see the chest, Sire? Uh, I didn't. I think there was a bug, but he now knows about our interference. I took a walk around the village. I was wondering about the curious cases happening around me. Right then a villager interrupted me. He begged for my help. His family was killed and he couldn't do anything about it. He wanted revenge. Revenge. Right. That was my reason for being here in Dawncraft. I talked a bit with the villager and offered to take revenge for him. He was excited and accepted. I traveled towards the quest and found another village which was right around the tower. I knew someone showed me this as a distraction hoping that I spent my remaining time in towers. I didn't want to follow this design. I wanted to create my own. They did not like that and threw a dragon at me immediately but after giving me a scare the dragon instantly disappeared this was a warning sign guys i am confused but i wasn't afraid i knew this was a sign that they were nervous the revenge quest was still on i traveled a huge chunk of this world and saw a lot of different stuff i was amazed at this world and after traveling a huge span of the world i am um, realized oh my god i read the map completely wrong I was going into the wrong direction. <laughs> I had to go east, not west. I think uh, my mind was still cloudy from the tower. So the next day, I just traveled towards the revenge quest and explored a bit. At some point, the map got buggy. They were again working against me. But I used my big brain and reduced the location without any help from the map. I found a guy there and asked him about a monster's whereabouts. But he just transformed and killed me. That was the creature who killed his family. We responded again on base, another werewolf attacked me, and I easily defeated him. He dropped a lichen elixir. That was one of the things I needed for the Chicago. I got to work and built this beauty. I didn't want to upgrade it, but I was missing one elixir and I just had to kill a werewolf for a quest. I got back to the werewolf and fought it off, but this time I got cheesed. Holy moly, it's going full circle. The cheese gets cheesed. Uh, so I died. I tried again and this time I was gonna cheese. It went pretty good until I activated the Chicago skill. It drained me of blood to increase its strength. I didn't realize, so I died. I once again went back there, this time to finish the quest. But on my way there, I wanted to test the Chicago and killed a few church doctors. Surprisingly, they dropped pretty well with stuff. With this stuff, I could upgrade my health. If only I learned about this on day one. Anyway, once again fought off the werewolf and defeated it. Thankfully, it dropped what I needed. Oh yeah, and I got revenge for the villager. That was also important. I then visited the villager and cleared the quest. Afterwards, upgraded Chicago. The next day, I visited the nearest village to check out if I could upgrade my health. I couldn't. On my way back, I noticed that a few villagers were fighting off the monsters in the tower. I obviously helped them as a veteran tower fighter. I then marked on my longest journey yet the next main quest, killing Night Robot. I traveled the ocean for a long time. Not gonna lie, the atmosphere got a bit scary. Being out here, surrounded by only bodies of water. The ocean was slowly consuming my mind. The ocean came my life and I became the ocean. The sun, the ocean and me. Nothing else mattered anymore. Land! Finally there's land again. On land I noticed how my computer was struggling with Dawncraft. I had to quickly kill Night Robber and leave this laggy lands. Well first we need to find a way stone. If I died here I would not go through the ocean again. So I searched the whole day and at night I finally found the village. So for the next segment we have a powerpoint presentation. My computer was screaming in pain as I continued recording Dawncraft. I was still searching for a way stone in the village but coupled with these frames I had troubles finding it. After a huge struggle I finally found it and was safe to die here. The next day, I reeled the game and searched for Night Robber's arena. When I found it, I got ready for the fight. He was obviously a good fighter, but me, I was a great cheeser. I enjoyed myself and how I withered away his life bar. <laughs> it was a great day and then I finally defeated him. <laughs>
After my victory, I went back to base. I completed the quest and unlocked a lot of new things from the Guildmaster. Honestly, what I unlocked was a huge rabbit hole. I got mesmerized by it and completely forgot about Dawncrow. But I woke up from this trance with one thought only. I had only 10 days left to kill the fire giant. And the next main quest target was a nine-tailed beast. So my only chance was to hurry up, kill the nine-tailed, and then hope to get the fire giant as the next main quest. I hurried on to find the nine-tailed. On the way, I found another waster and I had an idea. A cheesy idea. <laughs> I have unlocked my infinite travel. I could just take the waster with me. I would have a safe passage from everywhere in this world. I knew that it was brilliant. I continued on my search for the ninth. At some random place, I found a new enemy, a dark master. I decided to quickly finish him off and nipped his health away. Out of nowhere, he blasts me away and I die. Now, I got a bit stubborn and forgot about my time constraints. I attacked him again and again and again until I killed him. The rest of the day was just spent traveling and searching for the ninth. My computer was once again struggling. Found a jungle and searched around there for the ninth. Unfortunately, the map wasn't working again, so I had to guess where to find him. I traveled around but couldn't find anything. I continued my endless travel. I don't know how far I went, but at some point I ended up at a new world, a wildfire and a tumbleweed. Ha! Ah, Australia! After a while, the map was working again and I then found the location. I rooted all the buildings carefully and searched for the nine tail. He wasn't here. I was surprised. The map led me exactly here. What was going on? Until I noticed in the distance a small, lonely building. I knew he was there. I began my fight with the nine tails. I obviously tried to cheese him, but he was smart. He just went into the ocean to bypass the fall damage. So I had to slowly find him in the ocean. Death after after death, after death, I nibbled his health away. I built a weird strategy to fight him. I call it the hit and run or the swing and dive. Maybe the smash and pass? I don't know. And after a long time, I killed him. Now came the most important part, getting the new quest. If the next target would be the fire giant, I could clutch it out. I could fulfill my destiny. If not... Back at base, I completed the main quest, and the Guildmaster gave me the next quest to defeat Skeletor. I realized my goal was no impossible. It's over. We won. Celebrate my minions. The next day, um, I built a chair and depressed about my goals. I trained on me. How fitting. I visited my place around the world and noticed how I spent so much time in here. My blood was draining out of my body. Like, literally, a vampire sucked me off. I again sat in my chair and contemplated about my life. I found a crow in a cage again. I, I related to him. He, he was a prisoner of the cage and I, I was a prisoner of the 100 days. Together, we just watched how the days were changing. So, that was the final day, huh? I failed miserably. So, in the end, I couldn't even do anything. What? Who's that? What? Wait, huh? uh, um, you know what? He's right. Who cares if I failed now? If I stop now, it will become the end. But if I continue, it will just become part of my story. So you know what? I'll do a sequel and finish the goddamn fire giant. Heck, I'll do a trilogy if I have to.